to find out if my dad is really the monster that I've known him to be my whole life. I was told that he stuck me in a room and men were able to come in and do whatever they wanted to us. You haven't seen your dad in 22 years. And he's here. They told you that I sold you to men, raped you, and stuff like that? I'm not that person. I'm here because I love you. I've missed you. I didn't do this. God knows I didn't do this. Now all I got to do is prove it. I don't know if we've ever had this kind of situation on the show before. This got to be a big moment in your life. Are you ready for this? Kalista has been told that her father, Franco, molested her and allowed men to have sex with her for money when she was only three years old. She has spent her whole life believing this. But after 20 years of being out of Kalista's life, Franco found her online. He had no idea that he was accused of these crimes, and he's here to prove that he's not the monster she thinks he is. Take a look. It's been 22 years since I've seen my daughter. The last time I saw her, she was four years old. I've carried a picture of her in my wallet almost 26 years now. I carry it every day. When I went to prison, I had it with me in prison. When I do get to see her, uh, I want to give her that picture and tell her that she's always been in my heart. I need her in my life. I want her in my life. I'm being accused of raping her, molesting her, selling her to other men, beating her, and I just recently found this out. A family member has actually embedded this in her head to keep them away from me. I got in some trouble. I ended up going to prison for 16 and a half years. Since I've been out, 13 years ago, I've been looking for her, and I recently found her on Facebook and we started Facebooking each other and she started asking me these questions. What really happened with her growing up, if I molested her, and I'm basically here to clear this up. Hopefully we can start our relationship and I can become the father I want to be to her and not going through these accusations that have been brought upon me. You called the show. Yes. Why did you call the show? Um, I called the show because I want to find out if my dad is really the monster that I've known him to be my whole life. Um, I don't remember anything that happened to me because I was so young, but the simple fact that family members have told me the stuff that he's done has made me, like, like, totally despise him. I mean, I want a dad in my life. I want a father figure. I haven't had one. And it's just hard. It's really hard to go through. I have a child and I don't trust men around her. Um, I've lost a lot of friendships due to that. Um, and I just, I want to know the truth. What, what have you been told that your dad did to you? I've been told that um, he stuck me and other children in a room by ourselves and men were able to come in and choose who they wanted and he was able, they were able to do whatever they wanted to us and if I fought back or cried, screamed, I would get hit for it. Um, and you would have been three years old at this time. Yes. And um, I was told that he um, used to use this as like drug mules, um, that he physically abused me and other family members. Um, and just like it painted a picture of like the worst possible father you could think of for a kid. 
did they tell you this abuse started when? When I was about 18 months. When you were about 18 months. <laughs> then he was allowing men to sexually assault you. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing to even hear. You have any memories of these terrible things? No, I don't. Um, I do have nightmares to where I'm like kicking, screaming, holding myself, like saying, don't hurt me, don't do this to me. There's so, so much, so much stuff that I've gone through. And um, I just want to, I want to know. I want to know. Uh, what, how did you feel when your uh, father, your reaction when your father contacted you online? Um, scared. My first thought was scared, like, oh my God, he found me. Like, um, I was scared for my child. I was scared for my other family. Like, and then anger came out. And I wanted to know why. Like, why? Why would you do this to your kid? Like, well, you're supposed to be the one to protect me. You're supposed to be the one to tug me in at night, to be there for my prom, for my first date. Like, all that stuff. And, and during most of those years, um, he had been in prison. So yeah. he... He was in for drugs. I'm told he was convicted for drug convictions. And I was told he was in there for raping somebody else. I'm here because I love you. I didn't do this. God knows I didn't do this. Now all I got to do is prove it. This has got to be a big moment in your life. Are you ready for this? My biological father left us when we were just babies. I haven't seen my daughter in 17 years. Why'd you abandon us? I want to hear the truth. I am ready to answer the hard questions. You haven't seen your dad in 22 years, and he's here. It had to be scary when he contacts you. You see that it's your father. Did you respond back to him? Yeah. Um, I asked him, like, why? Like, why would you do this? Um, I don't think you should be even living on this earth. I think you're a waste of human space. Um, and just, like, don't ever think that you're going to get a relationship out of me. I'm not going to talk to you. I don't want nothing to do with you. And he was telling me, like, oh, well, I never did this to you, you know, your family members are lying to you and this, this and that and gave me his cell phone number, was trying to talk to me and I told him like, I don't want no part of you, I don't want no relationship with you until I find out the truth. And that's why you called the show. And that's why I called the show. What if your dad passes his lie detector test? It's going to be bittersweet for me because my whole life, like I have vowed to hurt him in any and every way possible because of what he did to me and my family. I vowed that he would never hurt any of us again. Um, and it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to switch from totally hating somebody to maybe him giving being my them, dad. Maybe giving them a, a chance. chance. Um, let's put it this way. You're a victim either way. Um, 16 years in prison long time for anybody uh, and he missed you know three years old you haven't seen him from that point on 16 years in prison uh, <laughs> that's that's a long time of out of anybody's life he wants some contact with you you must have said hey I want you to go on Steve Wilco show and take a lie detector test yes. and when you said that to him what did he say he said okay whatever it takes in order to prove that I didn't do this to you and to prove that I want you in my life um, that he was hurt, that I've missed out on so much. Um, I know this might be a real difficult question. If you can't answer it, uh, I totally understand. What are you hoping for? Are you hoping that it all was a lie? Or are you hoping? Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping it is because I haven't had a dad in my life. I want that father figure. I think every girl needs to have a dad in her life so that he can teach her the right and wrong when it comes to men. And um, You haven't seen your dad in 22 years. And he's here. 
Are you ready to meet your father? Yes. Your dad, Franco's here. Let's bring him out. I've never done anything to you. I've never done all this that's been about upon me. I love you with all my heart. I want you to be in my life. I'm trying to clear this up so that you and I can have a relationship so that I can be there for you. I'm serious. This is with all my heart. I know I didn't do this. God knows I didn't do this. And whatever anybody has told you that I have done to you is a lie. And a lie. And that's why I'm here. I wouldn't come no other reason. If I knew I did, I wouldn't even show up. But that's why I'm here. I'm here because I love you. I've missed you. I've wanted you in my life since you were born. So, I mean, I, I can understand your grief against me because what if other people have embedded in your mind? But I'm not that person. I'm not. And if you talk to anybody that knows me, they will tell you that. That's all I say. I love you. I love you with my heart. I don't love you to put you off so somebody else can abuse you. I wish I would have known this. I didn't know you were abused till three, three, well, when you got in touch with me. That's when I found out you had been abused. So, I mean, if I pass this test, great. Maybe you and I can start a relationship. I know it's going to take time. I'm patient. I'm ready for this. Don't be afraid of me. I'm here for you. I wasn't there back then, but I'm here now. And I want to continue to be in your life now. And I hope you realize that. And I hope we can get over this because it's really just, I've been in prison 16 and a half years. And I've been, that's all I've been around, child molesters. And I've used to fight every day in prison because of child molesters. And you think I'm one? That's sad. That's real sad. I don't know if we've ever had this kind of situation on the show before. This has got to be a big moment in your life. Are you ready for this? Nothing should have stopped you from seeing your kids. You're right. The biggest thing that I wanted out of this was for that little boy to meet his brothers and sisters. You want us to have a relationship with your son? Well, with your brother. Would you like to meet your half-brother? I don't know if we've ever had this kind of situation on the show before. This has got to be a big moment in your life. Are you ready for this? So don't shake, baby. Please don't shake. I love you. I Franco, love you with you, all my heart. Here's a, a daughter that you haven't seen for 22 years. I mean, the last time you seen her, she was a little girl. Now she's a grown woman, and she's here saying that this is what she's been told for her whole life. Yeah. that you did this to her. She's been told that her father left her as a three-year-old in a room and a man would pay you for, to go in there and violate your own daughter. No, that's not true. That is not true at all. I would never do that to you, never. I got, I got six other kids and five of them are girls. And if you talk to them, you ask them if I did what they say I did to you. Franco, why did you go to prison for 16 and a half years? I went to prison because I tried to be a so-called gangster, dope dealer, or whatever. And uh, I got caught up with uh, a real heavy mafia ring. And, uh, and they busted me with some stuff. Obviously, you made a mistake that you can only blame yourself for because you haven't been in her life. Right, right. And I do. And when you found her... And when I found her, you don't know. 
my girlfriend sat there with me and I cried. I cried for days. And then when you told me that they told you that I uh, sold you to men, raped you and stuff like that, uh, it killed me. It killed my heart. It really did. That's why I'm here. I'm here because I want to get this out of the way so you can live a comfortable life. I've lived my life. I've lived my life. But I will be here for you till I die. Till I die. And I promise you that. I promise you that. Not knowing where your child is. I mean, first of all, 16 and a half years locked up. Uh, you, have, you, have no, uh, you have no way of even searching. You have no access to a computer. Uh, letters have to be uh, read. And you're here today because you want to prove to Kalista that these things never happened to her. Oh, I know they never happened. And, and if I can prove it to you, it'll make it all the better. And I hope I do prove it to you. And I hope we can start a relationship. I do. I really do. I don't know what has been told to you. I'm starting to find out bits and pieces. And I'm trying to put it all together. So that way I know exactly what to say to you. And say, why, why are these people accusing me of this? I would never hurt you. I would never hurt you. I got... Sounds good. Well, yeah, it does. It does. Is there anything... Now all I got to do is prove it. Is there anything you want to ask your father? I mean, no. if you come back in my life and we get this done, great. If, if we don't, I have to respect that from you. Let's find out. I do. This is... Uh, I don't know if we've ever had this kind of situation on the show before. Um, this has got to be a big moment in your life. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I've been ready since I found that this happened to me. I've been ready. You know, I can say from one father to another, I hope you pass. I hope I pass too. We asked Franco, your father, have you ever touched your daughter for your own sexual gratification? He answered no. Have you ever allowed other men to pay you so they could molest or have sex with your daughter? He answered no. Have you ever physically abused your daughter? He answered no. And the results for Franco's lie detector tests came back all the same for each question. And they came back that Franco. My biological father left us when we were just babies. I haven't seen my daughter in 17 years. Why'd you abandon us? I want to hear the truth. You are the cop. Get off my stage. The results for Franco's lie detector tests came back all the same for each question. And they came back that Franco told the truth. Thank 
I'm here for you for the rest of your life till I die. I'm here for you. You are so beautiful. You are. I love you. Well, I certainly could say that if I haven't seen my daughter in 22 years, I would hug her as long as you have. Um, <laughs> Franco, I got to imagine that, that uh, 22 years ago, somebody was very bitter and told these things to Kalista because you let them down. Yeah. Um, well, that's my fault, baby. A horrible that's thing. That's my fault. And you know what? This, this is uh, a hard story, very sad story, maybe with a really good outcome here. Your daughter finds out the truth, and you get to be part of your daughter's life. Ooh. Um, Thank you. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so happy for Thank her. you, me too. Um, you have a half brother that you haven't seen since you were a baby. He's here. Uh, Frankie, let's bring him out. This is your brother. This is your brother. You're so handsome. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. to be scared no more. I'm here. You don't have to be Thank scared. You, Steve. Don't be You're scared. welcome. Thank you. Don't um, be scared. You, uh, you have a sister here that uh, you haven't seen in 20 years. What, what do you want to say to her? This, this is just really the most, one Love of the you, most sister. emotional. I haven't seen you since you were real little. The only memories I have is of you always calling me brother and crying for me and saying, brother, we love you. But you probably wouldn't have remembered any of it. We used to play. I remember I had a box turtle in the pamper box. Y'all used to always love to feed the turtle lettuce and stuff. We used to hang out all the time. I miss you, and I'm glad we could start a life. Me I too. want you to stay in contact. I want to see will. my niece. I want to get to know my niece and your sister as well. I, I don't know you. if we could have. You're beautiful. You're such a beautiful girl. Thank you, God, for blessing me with beautiful children. I, I gotta say, that's what makes me want to do this show, a story like this. This is why I love having this show, this is why I love coming to work, because if we can correct something that went on for 22 years, something bad, and we can change that, it, that's what makes this show worthwhile. Um, you came here and you didn't have any men in your life, and you had trouble trusting men, um, now you got two, and if you want to throw me in the mix, you got three. That, uh, well, you, you, have, you have men that you can trust in your life now. Uh, oh, yeah. You have a little daughter that I'm sure is going to love to meet her grandfather, meet her uncle. Um, and if anything, if you ever need anything, any help whatsoever, um, I'm sure from this point on, You'll have your dad to turn to, but if you do need, you call me and we'll help you again. My biological father left us. I haven't seen my daughter in 17 years. Why'd you abandon us? I want to hear the truth. Nothing should have stopped you from seeing your kids. The biggest thing that I wanted out of this was for that little boy to meet his brothers and sisters. You want us to have a relationship with your son? Well, with your brother. Would you like to meet your half-brother?
Janet recently emailed me because she hasn't seen her father since she was five. She wrote, hello Steve, I've contacted you before to help me find my biological father. Well, I found him on Facebook not too long ago and I want to know why he left me, my brother and my sister and why he never supported us. He expects me to buy a ticket to Florida to visit him. I have a three month old daughter. No way am I going to do that. He won't come and visit us and he only talks to us when we call him. And he even hangs up every time we bring up him leaving us. I just want the truth. Janet, it sounds like you have worked very hard to find your father and now I want to help you get the answers you deserve. I've had a photo of my dad my whole life, but that's it. My biological father left us when we were just babies. I haven't seen my daughter in 17 years and a son and another daughter in the same amount of time. If we were walking down the same street, cross paths, he wouldn't recognize us. For the past 17 years, I've done a lot of self-destruction, drugs, alcohol, and treating a lot of people like crap. When I think of my father, I think of a sperm donator. He's never really been there. He's, I don't really know him. He doesn't know us. I'm the oldest of the three, and I have a lot more memories than either one of them. I was about five years old when he left, so I do have quite a few memories of, you know, wrestling around with him and, you know, doing the father-son thing, and then just all of a sudden, he's gone. And now that I have a daughter of my own, I couldn't imagine living one day without her. And yet, this man walked away from three of his own biological children. I'm a father now, and I couldn't imagine being away from my son for an extended period of time. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Like, it would break my heart to know that I could not see my son every day. I would rather die than be a day away from my daughter. I can't fathom how he was able to do it for all these years. I felt, you know, ashamed, afraid of rejection, um, very embarrassed. I did not feel like I was good enough. He never gave me a reason. He, his reason for leaving that I believe is because it got too stressful with my mother. When I left my three kids, I met another woman later on. We got married and it was kind of a ready-made family and I kind of helped take care of them children and I really feel that I pushed my kids away while I was doing that. It pissed me off that he had a new family only because he had one before and he just completely abandoned us for this new family and just didn't care. He just completely abandoned, no calls, no nothing. He lived two blocks away from us for about 10 years. I, I've always known where they were. I should have been there from the very beginning. He, he could easily walk down the street and he wouldn't even do that. I should never have let the drugs and alcohol take over my life. I should have reached out a long time ago. And now it's been 17 years. I had to contact him. I had to initiate that conversation and that's what's disappointing. And so now I've been clean and sober for almost 12 years now. I want a relationship with them because, for number one, I am their father. They deserve to know who I am, to know me. And I've met a fantastic woman, and we have a beautiful little three-year-old boy, and I can't wait for my older children to meet their little brother. Ah, uh, he has a whole new family with a three-year-old son. I was actually kind of surprised to hear about that, and it's kind of strange. I mean, I'd like to meet him, my little brother, I guess. He deserves to know his brother and sisters. It's something that means very, very much to me that they have a relationship. Now that I know I have a little brother and stuff like that, I, I'm excited to meet my little brother. You know, I've always wanted a little brother. I have two younger sisters. I could never leave my three-year-old. Um, I'm in a completely different state of mind than I was way back then, and it's something that I could, I could never do to another child. If you're not going to walk away from your three-year-old son, how can you walk away from someone who's one? How can you walk away from someone who's five? How can you walk away from someone who's seven and needed you? And now, all of a sudden, he's, he's more important? Eventually, I was very ashamed of 
how I treated them and ashamed to even try to get in touch with them. And I'm glad that they got in touch with me. The reason why I want to see him now is that I need him to feel as bad as we felt. The reason I'm here today is to make right, clear the air, and hopefully have a relationship with my three older children. You need to understand that you can't just walk back in and expect us to love you. Not without answers. I don't want to hear that uh, he hasn't missed us, he hasn't thought about us, or he's only doing this because. When I see the, my grandchildren on Facebook, I, I, I almost cry every time I see them because I'm not in their life. Now he's feeling bad. And, you know, good, you better feel bad. I want you to feel as bad as we did. Hopefully they are able to forgive me. I want to hear from him an apology, maybe a little bit more explanation of why he wasn't there. I want to ask, you know, Jim, my father, if, you know, why he didn't want any contact, why he didn't make the effort. I would want a relationship with my biological father if he'll stop giving me excuses and give me answers instead. Why'd you abandon us? Hey, you know where we lived. We've lived in this house ever since we were knee-high to a grasshopper. And if they are willing to accept me back into their life, I would really be honored to be part of their life. I want to hear the truth. I am ready to answer the hard questions. Nothing should have stopped you from seeing your kids. You're right. The biggest thing that I wanted out of this was for that little boy to meet his brothers and sisters. You want us to have a relationship with your son? Well, with your brother. Would you like to meet your half-brother? You are the guy. Get off my stage. The biggest thing that I wanted out of this was for that little boy to meet his brothers and sisters. You want us to have a relationship with your son? Well, with your brother. My biggest fear right now is Corey, Don, and Janet rejecting me, rejecting their little brother. Pretty nervous on a few of the questions. Not so much the questions about the answers. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to look at you and not even know who you are? <laughs> Sorry, it's not okay. I understand that. No, you don't understand. You don't. Drugs, are, drugs and alcohol just playing a huge part of my life, and they shouldn't have. All and you needed to do was be a father. All, that's all I, we needed from you. We I, didn't want money. We didn't want anything. All we wanted was for you to be a dad. A phone call, a card, even you just walking down the street. Nothing should have stopped you from seeing your kids. You're right. I, really, I know that now. Yeah, you know that now. We could have used that. I dislike you for so many things that you have done in my life. And I was five. I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that there is... It was not right that what I have done to you. You're right. It is not right at all. There is the no excuse. There is and no you excuse. Did it. Yes, I did. Uh, Eleven years ago, I quit using heroin, cold turkey, stopped, and never touched it again. Never touched it since. I've stopped drinking. Haven't touched alcohol in eleven years. But eleven years ago, you still didn't contact us. That's true. Because of guilt, I felt guilty, fear of rejection. The last time that I have a memory of you was when you were playing house with another family and you gave them so much more attention than us three. 
this is. It's all on my shoulders. This is something that I've done. I've done a lot of damage over these past what, 18 years, 17 years. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. I know that. It's actually hard for me to hear that all this time, me and my brother have contacted you, but not once have you contacted her. I once. thought I thought she you would hate me the most. Facebook? I'm afraid after this, you're gonna disappear again. And I will stay in contact with you. If you want me to stay in contact with you, I will stay in contact with you. I would like you to be a part of our lives. I would like you to be a father to these two girls. I want you to be a grandfather to your, to your grandchildren. I want to be a part of your lives. I want to be a part of your children's lives. Time will only tell. This is true. I am saying now that I'm giving you the chance. That's all I ask for. I beg for a chance. That's all I ask for. The last thing I want to do is set myself up for failure. I don't want to do that to you. There is no excuse for the way I acted. There is none. The only way that you're going to make up for it is whatever happens after today. The biggest thing that I wanted out of this was for that little boy to meet his brothers and sisters and to have a relationship with them. It hurts me to know that what you just said, you want us to have a relationship with your son. Well, with your brother. Would you like to meet your half-brother? Would you like to meet your half-brother? I would. He's very much so. Mm -hmm. And after that, you could meet my daughter. That would be fantastic. And you could meet my son. That would be great. It really would. I might be a jerk and a, everything else, but he has never done anything wrong. I mean, I mean and he's just, I, I mean, and he is, he's the sweetest and smartest little boy. You're the only person that I'm angry at. Hi, buddy. How you doing, Daddy? Hey, listen. Can you say, this is your brother, Corey? Can you say hi to Corey? Hi, Corey. What's up, bud? Okay, and come here for a minute. Come here for a minute. And that is Janet. That's your sister, Janet. Corey? Yep. That's your big brother, Aiden. Because now he's went out and started a whole new family. And my worry is he's going to do the same thing to my brother. Could you imagine walking away from your three-year-old? Could you? I hope he never has to feel the hurt that the three of us went through. I, I just hope that you really have changed because I couldn't imagine what he would go through if the same thing were to happen to him. No. Dawn is upset because you are a part of his life. You have a whole new family and you've neglected this one for mm -hmm. this long and just pretty much left us sitting on the back burner to forget about. I will spend the rest of my life trying to make that up to you guys. I've made it a point not to be like my father. Once I've had my son, I, I refuse to be away from him for so long and to, to even think about leaving kills me. I'd like him to be there, I'd like him to be a part of my son's life and my niece's life, but it's his choice. They mean everything. I would, I would give up everything I have for my children and my grandchildren. I never thought I'd see these guys in person to be honest with you. Very emotional. I know I haven't shown any emotion yet, but that really, really hit me. Seeing the next generation of a family that I started long ago and walked away from, I feel so overwhelmed. I feel I'm a very lucky man right now. I'm a very lucky man. Thank you guys for giving me a second chance. I'm not gonna hurt you. I promise. Janet, you're a brave young woman. I'm glad you got a chance to see your father face to face after all this. And hopefully this reunion will be the first step in bringing your family back together.